Welcome, everybody. We have another episode of Against the Grain podcast. Make sure you guys like, comment, subscribe. We have so much content coming to you guys. I say that every time that we're on here, but honestly, we have so much content that we're working on. Our media team has been working so hard to give you as much content as possible. We have sermons, worship. We have more podcast episodes coming. So there's amazing stuff happening on this channel. So make sure you subscribe, share the video, share it with somebody, and uh, and let them be blessed. Like I said, there's just so much on here. I wish I could just, uh, you know, let you know all the episodes that are coming up, but you know we want to make, you know give you guys a surprise and stuff of, of, of all the uh, stuff that we have planned. But with that being said, I'm so excited to have our special guest. We have Jerry in the house. Jerry, how's it going, man? Oh, it's going it's so, good. So good to have you, Jerry. Yes. And um, man, I, I'm, I'm excited for this podcast because this episode here, because uh, you know I, we, we we've grown so much. You know our, our relationship, and you know we'll get into you know us working together now in ministry and everything. But um, you know, and so many people, Jerry, like they love you. Like so many people, just you you hype people up, man. It's <laughs> it's so awesome. But I, I'm gonna I'm gonna give you a second here. Why don't you introduce yourself? Introduce your family uh, uh, that's back home right now. Um, kind of just give an intro to yourself, kind of everything before we kind of get into your testimony. Those people get familiar with you. Well, um, so my name is Jerry Villarreal, right? Um, my initial name was Gerardo Villarreal, uh, but people call me Jerry or Jer Bear. Jer you know? Bear. <laughs> um, and so my name didn't change to uh, Jer Bear until I came to a Harvest Time Church. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what God does. You know, he, he changes you. He, he redirects you. He, um, he molds you into something else that's something beautiful, you know, um, but uh, yeah, I'm married. I have uh, my wife's name is Monica, and then, um, uh, I have three kids: Richard, Sienna, and Mia. And um, it's just been so amazing uh, this journey that that God has um, uh, redirected me, and God is just changing my life as today. Um, so yeah, it's it's just been such an amazing road, and um, very blessed. And yesterday was just Thanksgiving, yeah. And um, and it's so amazing that today, right here, right now, that. Um, you know, I would have been drunk. I would have been, mm. you know, just uh, not even thankful for the things that I've had or have right now, you know. And so right now, today, I'm very grateful and thankful for my family. And, um, and it's just been such an amazing road. And I just look forward to, um, you know, what God has for me in the future, you know. Amen. So, Amen. Amen. That's good, Jerry. And it's funny because, like I said, man, people see you now and they have no clue of, of your past and everything. And yeah. it's funny, like even what you're wearing, like you're always wearing some sort of Jesus something. <laughs> like <clears throat> you're a walking billboard. <clears throat> excuse me for the uh, for the gospel, you know. So um, walk us through. Take take us back a little bit on your testimony. Um, you have an amazing, amazing testimony. Take us back, kind of growing up, kind of where you were from, and and kind of you know where, where how everything led to where you're at today. Because, like I said, I mean. The, these episodes, these podcast episodes, what they are is, you know, we're not here to, to glorify our past. We're not here to, right. you know, some people do that, you know, in, in the church. I, I've heard, heard it more where it's like, oh, I was this, I was this and that. And it's kind of like, uh, I don't know, they almost like take pride in like their past and stuff. But it's right. like, man, Egypt was Egypt, man. We want nothing to do with Egypt anymore, but we should never forget where we came from right. so we can minister to somebody. And I believe that someone's going to watch this episode and they're going to see your story and they're going to relate to that or they can send it to somebody that they know or something. So um, walk us through. So start us back from the beginning and kind of give us a, a whole kind of rundown of your testimony here. Right. So a lot of times when I when I start, um, like what you're saying right now about uh, talking about my past, I always say uh, what, what Jesus saved me from, mm-hmm. you know, because um, if I don't say that, then I, I wouldn't want to be glorifying, um, you know, my past and stuff. But the thing is, is that, you know, growing up, I grew up with, um, with a beautiful family, uh, a large family. There's 16 of us, uh, 16 wow. kids, 16, uh, nine sisters and, and six brothers um and it's, it was just so amazing to uh, grow up like that with such a big family and such a a large blessing um with the same mom and dad you know um my mom and dad were uh, very old school um it was it's, it was just been it was just uh, amazing growing up with them um and then as i grew up um as um that that union that we have was just it was just so amazing um but as I start to grow up and I start to uh, um, go through life and stuff, um, you know, there was times where it felt like, um, like if I didn't have, like my parents were there because we were so uh, large of a family that sometimes you felt like, um, I felt like, um, you know, my dad wasn't there for me and stuff like that. Or my, uh, because of the large family, my mom was like a bi- 
uh, polar manic depressant mm-hmm. and stuff like that. And so I, I, it was really hard for me to feel the love of a father, yeah. you know, the love of a parent, you know. And so uh, growing up that way, um, we were all Catholic. Um, but in, in that sense of being in Catholicism, um, I didn't have like a good relationship with God. Like I knew God was there, but I didn't have like a personal relationship with them. And um, and so growing up, we went through um, Catholic school, uh, Catholic um, uh, elementary school, Catholic high school, and and it was it was amazing. Like growing up like that, you know, um, uh, like I went um, in school, I was always like really in sports and um, constantly playing sports, constantly like in leadership and, and doing things. I was even like mentoring mentoring. Um, students like wow. early uh, on too huh? early on yes wow. my school even flew me to uh chicago to uh to be a leader over there wow and then i was a leader there too in my peers and that so i used to like counsel them and stuff like that i was in like eucharistic minister uh where i gave the bread out and stuff like that i didn't even know this is crazy yeah yeah so i was really involved in, in leadership and really involved with um my peers and stuff what age was this like how old were you at this time um or like what grade uh from freshman year to senior year oh wow yeah so I, you know i started um i was an altar boy so i started like really early and even like in in grammar school you know just always playing sports and just always just doing doing things like that um and I actually was really good. So, mm. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but um, as I went throughout my life, there was always like something missing, you know, something, something in my heart that was missing. Um, and I didn't uh, quite knew. I didn't know what it was, you know. And so, um, and so after that, um, uh, when after school uh, ended, I had like no direction. I felt. You know, I had like, well, you know, what do I do next? You right. know, since now I'm not in leadership, now I'm not doing anything mm-hmm. um, in that sense. Um, so I lost direction. And then um, that's when I, uh, I found um, like life in the streets and stuff. And I went to towards uh, being in a gang and being uh, outside in the streets and, uh, you know, drinking and partying and stuff like that. And so um, and from there I got lost. Mm-hmm. I lost I got lost in the streets and you know and that mentality and stuff so and this was like this was so this was after high school this was after high school so yes. up until pretty much high school kind of like nothing too crazy in a sense you're in leadership you're kind of yes. doing things yes. and then he said like it wasn't until after really things started kicking off mm-hmm. wow yeah and so after that um you know uh, i met my wife at that time and stuff like that and then um as i was started going into the streets and stuff um i knew god right um, but then, you know, I knew of him, but I didn't have that relationship. Right. Um, and so, you know, things happened and stuff. And then, uh, I got shot. Um, I was, uh, ended up getting shot uh, out in the streets and, and, um, it hit me in the throat, and, wow. which basically was like centimeters away from hitting my throat and from me, uh, dying, um, me passing away and stuff. And on that day, um, it's so amazing because now that I have the relationship that I have with God. He showed me that day of that he was there with me, and he showed me that Jesus was holding my hand. And wow, come on. And, and and when I was actually um, getting put on the gurney, getting put um, on the bed uh, uh, for the doctors to come out and to for them to check on me, uh, so there was like blood going down my throat, uh, going down my chest. And um, I felt this peace mm. that surpasses all understanding, this peace wow. that everyone else was chaotic. Everyone else thinking that I was going to die. Um, everyone else was like just uh, putting their hand on my chest and stuff and uh, to try to stop the bleeding. Um, but I had this peace that I didn't understand at that time. And I had this like, this thinking like, I'm not going to die today, you know, mm. I'm going to live. And, and I was even, my spirit was actually smiling. And, 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 uh, and to this day, like I, I, to, um, at that time, I mean, um, I was just like wondering like what, what that was, you know? And so, um, and so I had this piece that I didn't understand. I had this, um, this, just this piece all over me, um, but when um, when I was gonna um, when they put, had me in the hospital, 
um, you know, they all came to me and stuff, and and um, uh, then I knew I was going to live. But um, so Jesus uh, showed me that he was there with me and he was holding my hand and stuff. Wow. So it was just, yeah, it's just so amazing to to um, to know after now, now that I have this relationship with him, that he showed me that. But um, so going back to that, um, I still didn't. Um, that still didn't hit me, mm. you know, after that. It hit that. you, but didn't hit you. It, yes, it hit me, but it didn't hit my spirit mm. to say, you know what, it what are you, you doing? It hit you physically, though, in the throat. Yes. Man, that's yeah. crazy. Was this another, like, neighborhood or something or that, yeah. that was, like, shooting at you guys and stuff? Yeah, it was, It was you know, another neighborhood and stuff like that. And, you know, thank God that, um, you know, he, he spared my life and, you know, he loved me that much that, you know, he was not done with me. You know, there's you got still... Hit. Where, where in the, sorry, where in the throat did you get hit? Right here. Do you still have a scar or anything? Yes. Wow, you can see that. I don't know if you guys can see that at home, but you do have a scar. Yeah. And it's crazy, Jerry, because even before you told me, I never even knew that. I never even knew that 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 part. Yeah. And you got it's not like you got hit in the arm or in the leg or something. You got hit in the throat. Yeah. Like that could have, I mean, that could have been, that, that would have been it. That would have been it. Wow. Yes. And then yeah. you said Jesus showed, like he showed you even at that time, before you were really serving him. No, he I was you. not. No, I actually turned my back to God, you know. And so, um, and, he's, and he was there with me. Um, but yes, like I said, that that wasn't even... Like, I thought I was more cooler after mm. after that. You know, I wow. thought I was I was more tough after that. Like, yeah. wow, you know, I survived this, and um, and you know, it actually gave me a badge of honor to mm. like do you know to go more deeper into the streets and go wow. you know, deeper deeper into stuff. You know, and mm. so, um, but yes, I, I think you know, thank God for that. Um, he's so amazing and stuff. Wow. So, um, and so as as life kept going, um. You know, I got more deeper into stuff and, and, um, you know, but then life hits you, you know, life hits you as you're, you're in, 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 in that, um, whatever you're doing at that time, you know, life hits you because you have other people surrounding you, like your brothers and your sisters. And then, um, after that, I lost another brother. I lost a brother, uh, to suicide. Um, he committed suicide and, um, that really, um, sent me into like a spiral into go into into like more deeper of a depression mm. uh more deeper into drugs more deeper into um into like that lifestyle um and then uh after that um my brother passed away from cancer so it was like wow. uh, it was back to back um it was really hard um and I, I wasn't mad at god but i wasn't with god mm. you know I didn't feel his love. I didn't feel his his comfort. I didn't have his 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 um his love at that time, and so um, I I really relied on drinking and drugs to get me through uh, those times, and that just sends you more deeper into a realm of of of, of darkness and and confusion and 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 anxiety, depression, and then also too uh, of suicide. Now I'm thinking like suicide. I'm getting wow. thoughts of suicide. I'm getting thoughts of, uh, of, of you know, just ending my life. You mm -hmm. know, and no one else knew. You know, no one else knew that I was getting these thoughts. No one else knew uh, I could be smiling on the outside. I could think yeah. I could I could be like you know I have it all together, but really I was dying inside. Wow. Really I was I was so messed up. But but I hit it really good. You know, were you like, uh, how old are you at this time? Like in your twenties, like this is after high yeah, school. Yeah. After high school, my twenties. Mm. Um, so, um, yeah. And, and, um, it just got really bad fast, mm. really bad fast, you know? So, um, but it was just, so, you know, it's, as you go, um, as you go throughout your life, you see like, wow, you know, that God was still always with me, mm. you know, even though, even in those dark times, you know, even in those times where you think that he wasn't with you, you think he wasn't there. He was in the Bible. It says God will never leave you nor forsake you, Amen. you know, and, and I know that he was always with me, no matter how dark it was. He was that light shining inside wow. of me, even though in those times he, he didn't let me go, you know, in the Bible, and there's this song called, called uh, reckless love. Yeah, come on. You know, and and he, I just felt like you know he was he was going after for me like his reckless love was going after me no matter where I was mm. he was going reckless he was knocking down walls the walls that I had built up mm. for uh, for anybody for people for him he was knocking them down and uh, throughout my life I know that he was he never uh, he never left me nor forsake me and 
And um, it's just, you know, so amazing to to be able to sit here and talk about it mm. and, and be able to open up because yeah. I was a man that didn't open up to nobody. Mm. You know, I didn't I didn't like to talk to nobody. I didn't mm. like to talk to people. I didn't I, I didn't trust people. I didn't trust, you know, um, just being around people with anxiety, depression. Yeah. And it wasn't necessarily people it was me mm. you know it was just me um of of what i've been through what i was going through um and so to like sit here and, and talk about this is just so amazing what mm. god does you know yeah. he 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 wants you to open up you know mm. he wants you because he's gonna turn uh what the enemy meant for evil yeah he's gonna turn it for good come on and that's what he's doing right now Amen. you know he's turning it for good mm. um uh because there are people out there that that are going through suicide. There are people that are out there going through thoughts of suicide, depression, anxiety, and there's an answer, yeah. and his name is Jesus. Amen. You know, so um, and at that time, um, you know, going through that, um, it was just you know, it was just like a really dark part of my life that um, that I still look back and I just thank God that He got me through that. You know, Amen. yeah. So. Um, it's just, it's just been so amazing. And so, and, 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 um, you know, going through that, um, you know, I actually, after that, I even, um, uh, from getting shot and from being out on the streets, you know, um, you know, there was a time where, um, where Monica was like, even, uh, I was so bad that Monica was even like praying for me to get arrested. <laughs> really? Yeah. Like, and because, this is in East Los Angeles, right? Um, this is actually, no, this is not uh, from East, from, I already had moved out of East LA. Okay. And I already met Monica and stuff and, and, and we started, a, um, we got married, right? We got married and we started a family and stuff like that. And, um, you know, and I, I still was in the streets and I still was, you know, was doing stuff, um, um, that wasn't right, you know, and so, mm -hmm. um, and so, but I was going down a, a dark road that's so fast, so, so, so much that, um, like it was either I was going to get killed or someone was going to kill me, mm. you know, and so, um, um, so it came down to the point where, you know, I was just so bad that, um, she was just praying that, you know, at least something that I get arrested or something like that. And well, wow, just to pull you off the street. Yes. Wow. And sure enough, that day I was going somewhere, you know, somewhere else and stuff. And um, uh, I don't know what was going to happen, but I didn't care, hmm. you know. And so um, and that day I got arrested. Wow. Yeah, I got arrested. And, and that was another part of, of, you know, saving my life, you know. Um, because who knew what was going to happen, you know, yeah. um, a person that doesn't care about their life, it's a dangerous thing, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah, that's right. But, you know, that's where God transforms us and, you know, we care about our life. We care about other people's lives, you mm -hmm. know? And so, um, and so going down, and so after that, me being arrested and stuff, um, you know, I have a, a, a my sister and my brother-in-law that are also saved. Mm. Um, and so they started reaching out to me and they sent me Christian books and they said, it's like in prison. You went to like actual prison, huh? Yeah. Yeah. So this is, like, this is in prison. Um, and you know, I got arrested for selling drugs and stuff like that. And, and, um, uh, but the thing was, was that, you know, God was knocking on my door, mm. you know, and he's relentless when, when, uh, you know, he comes, you know, comes for you, he comes, you know, with you and he's Prison there. Prison doors, come any on. doors. He huh? knocks down come the on. doors. Come on. <laughs> and so, and, and it's just so amazing to see, you know, like afterwards when you're in it, you don't see all the little, all the, you know, miracles, all the, all the people that are, you know, pouring into you and, and talking to you and stuff. But, um, I remember my sister sent me this book and, uh, and it was it was a good book. It was an amazing Christian book, and I started reading it, and it has Bible verses in it. And so um, from there, um, it was just so so awesome to to start hearing the word and start going that way. But um, still, that wasn't you know like you know the turnaround point for me. Um, but as I you know went throughout you know my life, I st I still remember you know the people that were pointing into my life and praying for me. You know so. Um, I always remember that, you know, the people that you're praying for, like that person that that's in your family, that person that's because I was addicted to drugs for 20 years. Wow. 20 years I was addicted to drugs. And I, I still remember the times where I would sit there and I was loud. I, I would be wondering, when is the day that am I going to get over this? When is the day that 
that I am not a, that I get rid of these addictions, you know. Mm-hmm. And we all have family members, we all, maybe ourselves, you know, um, or family members, people that are listening to this later on, yeah. um, you know, have people in their lives that that um, that are in, in drugs and that are, yeah. you know, in depression, anxiety and stuff like that. So um, keep praying, you know, we, we have to keep praying for them and, and we have to keep, uh, um, um, you know, pushing it for them and... and so that you know they can be saved, they can be uh, uh, um, set free, you Amen. know. And so, um, so that's so good. But going back to that, um, uh, being arrested and stuff like that. So I got out after that. Um, how long were you there for? How long was uh, your prison? Uh, I was there for a couple of years. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and Monica stood with me, um, and so I'm very grateful that she she stood with me and uh, uh, she she also did the time with me. Yeah. You know? and they so, say your family does the time with you too. Yes. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. And so, um, and so she did, and I'm very grateful for that, you know. And so, um, but as I got out, um, uh, that still like wasn't enough for me, you know. I still didn't turn my life around and stuff, um, and um, you know, I, I, um, I just you know didn't learn from that still. Um, so, um, so then I, I stood uh, more to uh, to drugs and stuff like that. Um, but in that time, I got this job. And in that time, I got, um, you know, I was uh, I was searching for God. Mm. You know, I was I was like, okay, I was like, there's more out there. You know, mm. there's more, there's more. Like, like God is more. God is in the more. And so, um, and I was like, God, you know, uh, where are you? You know, um, what are you know? Um, help me. You know, I was crying out for God. You know, mm. and so um, God leads you. Mm-hmm. You know, He leads you to to this path where you could find him, you know? And, and so, and it was so amazing because, um, even in my, even in my addictions, even in my, um, in, in the darkness of where I was, I was at the time, um, uh, God led me to, to people to come to Harvest Time Church, well, right? Come on. Come on, you know? Uh, and, and he leads you and he gives you little seeds and there's people that, you know, that, pour into you that give you those good seeds and you're like what like <laughs> and, and and my spirit you know my spirit felt this this uh, what i'm gonna go into right now um and i was actually it was at work and i was working and um i was really um getting attacked by the enemy about suicide and mm. uh, um and i couldn't kick this addiction right and you're not just talking about like just weed. You're talking about like hard, serious drugs, yes. like a real stronghold on you. Yes, v- really big stronghold, like uh, very, very huge stronghold that I that I, I myself couldn't get rid of, you know. Mm. And so I'm in this house, um, and, and it's so amazing because you know God goes after us, you know. He he well, he sets us he sets us up, and and he sends people in your life um, to bring you br- bring us to Him, you know. And so I'm in this house. And this person um, is just worshiping the Lord like <laughs> crazy, like awesome, you know. Mm. And with the worship music was so loud, <laughs> and it was like everywhere, you know. It's like I don't know if she had surround sound or something, but <laughs> it was everywhere. And I'm trying to work yeah. in this house, you know. Mm. And and so I'm working, and this music, this worship music, is singing to my spirit. Mm. I'm just like, what is that, you know? Because I didn't grow up Christian, you know. And so I didn't, you know, I you know didn't know uh that type of music so much you know and so i was like what is that music you know singing to my spirit Mm -hmm. and this this um awesome lady of god uh her name is uh, prophetess silva sanford Mm -hmm. you know and so was one of our best friends in ministry like my parents and stuff yes pastors yeah you know and this is like seven years ago this is like years ago you know and so i'm I'm in her house and I'm working, right? <laughs> and she has this music loud, so loud. And I was just like singing to my spirit. And she tells me her testimony. And when she tells me her testimony, I'm just like, wow. And, and you're still singing right here. You're still praising the Lord. Like you're, you're, they're ministering to me, you know, and, and, and my spirit is filling the Lord right now, you know? And, and, and so she prays for me, lays hands on me. Wow. Oh my gosh! Like and and the spirit was so. And I didn't know about the Holy Spirit like mm. so much. How you could feel the Holy Spirit like that, right? And and she did all that right. And I left that house like, wow, mm. what was that? Mm. You know, like my spirit got jolted. Like wow. it was like a boom. 
Come on. You know, and I was like, oh, my gosh. Dry bones come alive. Come, come on. on. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> and so when I left, I was like, wow, like, what was that, you know? And it was it was a direction towards God, you know? And so um, after that, years pass, right? And, and so I'm still looking for God. I'm going from church to church, you know, several churches, and uh, I'm just looking for God and stuff. And, and so at that time, Monica... My wife, um, uh, 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 awesome couple, uh, Antoinette, Chris and Antoinette, um, at our church, you know, mm-hmm. they, they go and they send out all these thousands of flyers everywhere. Yeah. Thousands of flyers. Um, they sit out to the West, to the malls, West Covina Mall, other places and stuff. And out of all those thousands of flyers, Monica get, gets a hold of one, mm. you know, and she, you know, my wife, Monica, she likes to work out and yeah. stuff like that. And so, so she gets one. And she ends up going to the boot camp, right? And uh, it's called it's called uh, um, a lifted boot camp, right? Yeah. And so they go to she goes to boot camp, and then uh, Antoinette just starts um, pouring into her, you know, um, about God and about you know the love of God and about the Holy Spirit, and and all this time, you know, um, I start seeing a change in Monica, you know, and then and then she starts going to church, right? And as she starts going to church, I just start seeing this this um, change in Monica, you know, as she starts to meet all you guys and stuff. And I'm just like, where is this church at? What, <laughs> who's there? You know, yeah. like, you know, me, the husband, you know, I, I, you know, I was really um, different. I was really mm. jealous. I was really in, uh, um, insecure, wow. you know. And so, you know, I went to boot camp just to scout it out and see wow, who was there and stuff on. like that. And I'm, I'm being honest. Yeah, I'm be being real. I got to be real, you know. And... and and um, so I, I, you know, did that. But then I just seen like everyone was just like the genuine love of, of God, you know. Mm-hmm. And so I was like, wow, you know, this is amazing. And so we ended up started going to church. Um, and so uh, in that time, you know, as we started, you know, there was a big change in, in, in Monica. There was a big, you know, started to see a change in me. Um, and um and so it, it just, you know, at times where, you know, you see yourself before and you're like, wow, you know, um, you, you, you know, you have to um, start giving up stuff. You have to start, yeah. you know what I mean? The things of your old past, right. you know, the things that will bring you back to where you used to be, um, um, you know, you know, start to, you know, uh, kind of like haunt you, you know, right. because cause you can't, because you got to, you got to give up some stuff. So um, uh, as I was going to church, um I didn't want to do that hmm. at that time. I didn't. What want year to. was this, Jerry? Do you remember? This was in um, 2017. 17. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it sounds right. Yeah, around well, 2017 to like the beginning, 2016, hmm. 2017. Um, um, and at that time, I didn't really want to give up my stuff. You know, hmm. I didn't want to give up my addictions. I didn't want to give up. Um, um, the things of what I was doing before, you know. So you're still using at this time, this whole yeah. time. Wow. Yeah, I was still using and still sometimes coming to church, but not always not committed to church, mm. not committed to coming. Um, but Monica, I seen like this amazing change in her, you know, and that's what that's what was kept me, mm. you know, kept me uh, uh, to keep going, you know. And so, um, and the thing was, was that um, since I didn't want to give up, what I was doing, um, you know, uh, we were at this party this one time, me and Monica, um, and we were drinking. Uh, well, I was drinking, and 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 she came to me, and Monica, like I already had seen the changes in her, you know, and she came to me and she said, like, "Wow, you're still gonna drink, you know? Wow. You're still gonna." And she had this like sad, sad look in her in her eyes, you know. And I knew I disappointed her. Hmm. And, and so I told her, I said this. I said, "Why don't you just drink with me?" And I know that drinking was her, her struggle. Wow. You know, and even though all the things that I seen, all the good that I seen, all the changes that she was making, I didn't care. This is like her. You guys are already going to church. Like she's yes. already she already changed. Yes. And you want her to drink? Yes. Wow. And I knew that that was her, basically poison. Wow. You know, and so, and I told her this, and she looked at me with that such sad face, and and she said, okay, okay, you want me to drink? I'm going to drink then. And she she drank that day, and, uh, and she started drinking heavily, right, within the next week. And then um, she drank so much that she fell back and cracked her skull. Wow. 
Uh, and um, she almost she almost died wow. because of my selfishness, because of what I wanted to do, you know, and I what I didn't want to give up. Mm. And that day, that day I fell to the floor and I said, God, save my wife, save my life, because she was, you know, she's a big part of my life, you know, and and I gave up my life. I gave up. Uh, I surrendered my life to God, mm, and on. I said, uh, 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 and I said, save her life, and and it's so awesome because God is a healing God. Amen. He's a healing God. He restores you physically and spiritually. Come on, you know, and, and so, and so He wants to heal us, and so. Um, I said, you know what, um, at church, uh, at the hospital, I said, we got to go to church. We have to go to church. We have to go to church. And so when we went to church, that that's like, it was so bad that, you know, the doctors were like, um, uh, she had bleeding, right? She had bleeding um, in her brain. She had bleeding coming out of her, she had blood coming out of her ears and stuff like that. She couldn't hear. Wow. She couldn't, like, uh, she lost her hearing. And, and she she was very she couldn't even think straight. She uh, had vertical and stuff like that. And um, but I knew God's a healer. Like I said, man, we we need to take her to the physicians of all physicians. Come on, come on, and some come on somebody, you know. And so <laughs> and so, wow. I, I said, you know what, God, I know you can heal her, heal her. And so we um um after they re, you know they let her go and stuff um. Uh, she still wasn't hearing and stuff like that. She, thankfully, she made it through. Um, uh, but we went to we went to the next Sunday service, and um, uh, you know, some people prayed for her, and they laid hands on her, and the Lord healed her. Come on. Within 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 the next day, she got her hearing back. Wow. Within that within uh, within. Um, uh, days she could she uh, she got her her um, she was at the vertical was gone. Come on. Um, the 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 bump in her in her head went down completely. Wow. Like it was just so amazing. And I seen the love of God. I witnessed a miracle. Come on. And I gave like that was it. Uh, I haven't turned back since. Wow. From that time. From that time. Isn't it crazy, Jerry? Like you know we we've heard a lot of amazing testimonies like this before and. You know, usually when things happen like that, you know, we, I think we've all been there where something happens, something tragic, and we'll fall down, like you said, you know, on the floor or whatever. And like, God, I promise if you get me out of this one, God, I promise if you heal my mom, God, I promise if whatever the case, whatever you need in that moment, and then it happens. Let's say the miracle does happen and God gets you through it and when everything works out, oftentimes we still go back to what yes. we were doing. But it's so crazy how you're saying how... You ask God, God, God healed your wife, got her through it, and you're like, I'm not going back. I'm not. That's going amazing back. because yes. so many times, like I said, we go back even though we don't want to, you know. And we we prayed for the miracle, we see the miracle, and we still it's not enough for us, you know. Mm -hmm. But I love that. I just shared on Facebook the other day. Uh, Peter, you know, he, Jesus. It says that you know Jesus, you know, is is in his ministry and stuff, and there was disciples with him, and that they left him. They went back home, and they just they didn't want to follow him anymore. And then Jesus looks at the twelve and is like, "Are you guys going to leave too?" And then Peter responds, you know, with like, "God, where else are we? Where else are we going to go?" Jesus, like, you know, you you're you're it. There's there yeah. is nothing now. So it's just so amazing that you actually had that and you stuck with it. Yes, that's so amazing. So what happened after that? Um, so, so she gets healed, and then now you guys are coming to church and stuff now. Yes, yes. the change is happening. Yes, the Come change on. is happening, and, and 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 you know I'm the type of person to where I'm like, okay, God, like I trust you, like I trust you, but yeah, I gotta put my foot in a little bit. I gotta put in my foot like a little bit more, you know. And and, and God has really been like gracious with me mm. and showing me that it's okay to be that way, you know. Mm. It's okay, and, and now like. Um, and like God is just so amazing, and, and one of the things, one of the things that's so important that that why I feel that like I'm, I'm still with God is because God has lifted the veil off of what what the enemy does. Mm -hmm. You know, He lifted the veil of like you know me drink, of of drinking alcohol, of drugs, and stuff. That it it, it leads to death. Mm. You know, God, like he lifted that veil and I see the truth mm. in drinking. I see the truth in, in all that stuff now that it's going to lead like my decisions um, that I 
make in my life, whether I feel they're small or big, um, even the small decisions on just to drink one beer, yeah, where it's gonna lead to, yeah. you know, it's gonna, it, um, this, the decisions I make, I'm leading someone, I'm mm-hmm. leading, I'm leading my wife, I'm leading my kids, yeah, and where am I leading them to, yeah, and and you like you shared, you know, you basically like got Monica to drink and she fell and got herself hurt, like that's a direct consequence, yes. And it's so crazy how, like, sometimes our own actions, they don't produce consequences that direct. Like, that was obvious for you to see. Like, it was a direct correlation. But sometimes we don't see, because it's not so direct like that, we don't see the impact that we're having with our family. So it's so amazing to see where you're at now because it's like you have an impact on your wife, your family, and even now your extended family. Yes. It's been amazing. Yes, it's so amazing. And so now now that whenever there's, like, a temptation or because the, the enemy's not going to stop. Right. The enemy's not going to stop. Each and every day, I got to say, I say yes and amen to God. Like, Come on. You know, um, every day, you know, I got to do that. And, and it's now I'm, like, gladly doing it. Now mm. I'm like, you know what, Lord? Like, you know, I give myself to you. You know, I pray every day. And, and so the enemy doesn't stop. So whenever I get, like... Um, Whenever I get like uh, um, you know uh, thoughts of drinking or thoughts of of drugs, like there was this one time where it was out. I was in my office, right, and and this is how hard like how hard the enemy comes at you. Um, I was in my office and I walked into a cloud of meth. Wow! Like like I smelled it, like I tasted it, and, and I was like in my office, and I was like, what was that, you know? Mm. And so that's the enemy trying to tell me, trying to get back, me back into doing that stuff, you know, and, into like a, a memory of it and mm. stuff like that. But you know what God does? God lifts up lifts up the veil and says no, because it's going to lead to death. It's going to wow. lead to, wow. to, 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 you know, to darkness, to, to anxiety, to depression, you know? And sometimes when we come to the Lord, you know, uh, we just want to be, we want to feel the Lord, we want to feel his love. Right. But we have to repent. We mm-hmm. have to turn from our, our old ways, you know. And and, and and a lot of times, you know, um, it's very hard for people to do that. But, you know, um, I, I was realizing that, you know, that the veil was lifted and I see what that, you know, what, it could lead to, you know, and so that's that's what that's what um, what goes through through me of of um, you know having to drink a beer or having to you know that thought process, and it's like no, you know, right away I rebuke it and and um, and I re- you know I realize that you know what it's going to lead to, and it just you know uh, with God's love and stuff, it just helps me so much all, every day, all the yeah. time. Like I said, Jerry, you're such like a ball of like energy, like just you carry the spirit of God like all over you. Like, you know, we uh, we'll, we'll get into a little bit now kind of where you're at today. But like, man, I, I could probably speak for everyone in the church when they see you. There's like, come on, Jerry, <laughs> like you and your wife, you know, you guys just carry like a spirit of, of you, the, that Holy Spirit, you know, just spirit of joy, spirit of like just thankfulness. Like you could just see that on you guys, you know, yeah. not even knowing your story, like you can honestly feel like. Wow, like God delivered you guys from something serious because you guys have so much joy now. And and it's not even to say, and it's so amazing because like your life hasn't been easy since you guys have come to Christ. There's been things that have come up. I, you know, we know personal, you know, we, 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 we talk a lot and stuff. There's been uh, just battles and just a whole bunch of stuff, you know, and even yeah. in, in your wife, you know, um, you know, she lost her sister as well too. Yes. Um and you guys just have been through the the craziest things, the worst. And you guys are still it's still happening and it's it's part of life, you know, we go through these things. Yeah. But it's so amazing to see your joy and just your faithfulness through it all. It's such a blessing. And I'll kinda of go into a little bit, you know, you you know, you and I now are working together, you know, fast forward all these years later, you know, set free, delivered and yeah. and I think in twenty twenty is when I first I'll share that for a second. In twenty twenty, you know, we started seeing a big shift in our church, you know. Um you know, a lot of leaders, uh, you know, things happen and, you know, quarantine and, you know, the pandemic and stuff, you know, different things shifted around and stuff. And, and God, I feel like in 2020 is really highlighting certain people and you were one of them. You know, we started, the, uh, you know, the, the online services and you were on there faithfully, you know, always encouraging us. And you just like rose to the top, like really quickly. All of a sudden, I remember preaching on this one day in our live stream in 2020. I remember preaching on um, that we needed fathers and mothers to step up in our church because for the longest time we've had a young church, you know, yes. but it's like we've been lacking the fathers and the mothers, you know, spiritual fathers and mothers. And I could say from when we spoke, like you and your wife completely, like just completely stood up and like in the spirit, just like 
I'm right here. Like I'm here, like I'm checked in, you know? And, uh, and from there I was just like really feeling God, like all over you, like starting to launch you in ministry. I'll never forget. I called you in 2020. Right. And I was like, Hey Jerry. So like, God's been highlighting me, uh, you to me. And you know, I need, I need help with our men's ministry. Like, would you be willing to help out? And like, you're just like, come on. Like come you're just on. all excited. You're like, yeah. you're like, well, like, I, I mean, I've never really done anything like that before and everything. Yes. Like, I, I, I mean, but I, I'm pretty sure I could do it. Like, yeah, let's yes. go for it. You know, yeah. you're like, you know, just so willing to just kind of like step into it and stuff. And then, uh, you know, fast forward now, you know, we have our Sons of Courage mm -hmm. uh, men's ministry, you know, and you and I co-lead and on that. And it's been a blessing. It's been a blessing to serve with you. And like I said, like you, you know, you've really stepped up and I'm just so proud of you. I just wanted to take a second just to say that I'm so proud of you. You know, you've shared some of your testimony and I don't even know probably all the stories because there's so, so much yeah. to talk about and stuff. <laughs> but, you know, the gist of it is just like you were lost and now you are found. Mm -hmm. And not only are you found, because some people stay there, right? Like they get saved and everything, but they'll still sit in the back for 20 years. You mm -hmm. know, they'll get saved, set free. They have a good job now and they'll just be comfortable. But you're just like, no, I'm saved, set free. And I'm jumping on the 5 a.m. prayer call. You know, I'm opening up service on the, you know, on the mic. You know, I'm, I'm, you know, leading our men's ministry. Like you're doing all these things now, you know, helping with the ushers. Just, you're just serving everywhere now. Like even on Sunday mornings, you get there early with us at 8 a.m. and help yes. put up curtains. Like you're just so willing to serve. So I just want to say, Jerry, thank you so much for that because, you know, uh, it, it's just a blessing. Talk to us a little bit about serving, kind of your heart on that, kind of what God's been showing you in this season of now serving in ministry now. Yeah, it's, it's just been so amazing because, uh, you know, you have been an awesome example of, of a servant's heart. Like, uh, you lead by example, and I was just like, wow, just to see... Uh, the love, the love that you have for your heavenly Father is so amazing, and and you do it through to to a servant's heart, and you do it because you love God and you want to serve people, you know. And I recognize that, and I seen that, you know. There was a time when when uh, we went out praying, and and um and you led by example by you just walking like you didn't put pressure <laughs> on me. You're like you know if you don't want to pray you don't have to pray, but you know but you led by example, and I really admired that, and I really I really. Uh, um, was like, wow, that's awesome because, you know, you lead by example, you know? Mm -hmm. And so I was just like, you know what, around that time, uh, around 2020 and all that stuff was happening, um, the Lord really put it in my heart to be encouraging. Mm -hmm. He told me, he told me to encourage people, you know, and, and he lighted, he highlighted you to me, mm -hmm. you know? And, and so, and he told me to call you, you know? And, I remember that. Yeah. And so, and the Lord does that, you know, he does that. He highlights people and, 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 and um, you know. Kind of like what Sylvia did to you. Yes. You it's know, crazy. now you're doing it for us, yes. for other people. And so, and so, I remember him telling me that, and I, you know, and I, and, and I reached out to you, and and at times, you know, at times we think like uh, leadership, oh, they have it all, or they don't mm. need prayer, but they need the most prayer. Hey Amen. Come on, pray you know for what me I mean? Right now, Jerry, come, on. come on, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> and so, and they do it, yeah. and, and, and so that's what the Lord was telling me. Mm. And so then, um, and so Monica um, and, and Eileen created this, um, you know, they uh, started this prayer service in the morning. Mm -hmm. And so I started, you know, jumping on and we started praying. And, and every day, you know, it was a sacrifice, but it, it, it was beautiful because it, it's so amazing to get up and just worship the Lord and just pray for him, pray for people, pray for everybody, uh, cover people. And, and, and in that time, it's kind of like training. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's kind of like you learn and you, and you train and you, and you're, you're, you're in it with, with, with your tribe, you yeah. know, and so, and you're covering each other, you know, and, and, and so from there, and it's awesome because God will, God will, what the enemy meant for, for evil or to do bad, God turned things, turns things into good. And so the time of quarantine, right, um, was a time of, of going into my secret place hmm. was a time of having building a relationship with God. And that's what I think the Lord is saying right now to people and to saying to this generation is that we need a relationship with God. Amen. We need to go to our secret place. We need to have communion with him. We need to uh, have him in our heart 24 seven. Um, um, and so that started, right. And, and so I started, you know, uh, um, having uh, spending more time with God, and and He's just really been uh, changing my heart, changing my. Um, there's this. Um, I really want to get into this right um, because I had the spirit of rejection mm. on me, right? Like I really felt rejected before. Um, 
and and me going into the secret place into my one time with, with my alone time with God, he showed me when that spirit of rejection came into me. And it was actually um it was actually I was like ten years old and I went to go visit my mom and she was in a mental hospital and I went to go visit her and I remember her looking out the window and she didn't look back at me and she didn't acknowledge me. And I was just like, why doesn't, you know, feeling that rejection, you know? Um, and and the Lord showed me that he was there with me. Wow. And, and and he showed me and 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 he and he told me that he's always been there with me, you know, and, and he's never left me nor forsake me. And, and so from there I was like, wow, Lord, like and this was in my secret place. Mm. You know, this is where where I you know, where he will show you things that you didn't even know you had, yeah, you know, like on. you didn't even know that was deep in your heart, you know. And so and he lifted that up, you know. And so that started my journey with with um, uh, in the secret place and, and having that relationship with him one on one, you know, um, and he's just been he's just been so amazing. And so as I go and as um sons of courage and and being that person i was like when you told me that i was like oh my gosh no way <laughs> like like my initial yeah, thought yeah. was like i could feel that yeah you you're know like, like, uh, like i you don't know. know if i yeah. want to you know you get nervous mm -hmm. you get like um you don't know if you can do it you know mm -hmm. and so the thing is is that yeah i went to god you know i went to god i, I you know and these time and these in these days, now I thank God that I have him, mm. you know, I thank God that he's with me and he could be there for me, counsel me, show me what to do, you know. And so I went to God and he, and he said, and he told me this, he goes, come on, Moses. Ooh. Moses thought that he couldn't do it. Moses, he, he couldn't speak. He couldn't speak. And that, that's always been my, my um, fear mm. of not knowing what to say or sounding uh, sounding dumb and yeah, stuff yeah. like that, and and so um, and now we're on the podcast. Come and on. now we're on a podcast, and now I was speaking in a podcast yeah. and with you, and like uh, and just saying my testimony, and, and that's what God does. He releases the chains. Yeah, come on. That 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 you know that will one time you know uh, bring you down, or he really he releases the chains of your voice. Right. You know the chains of 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 you know. Of not stepping out, you know, and not saying your testimony because pastor says, uh, and, and another thing, man, pastor is so awesome, man. Uh, God led me to pastor so much that he, he like, pastor is so amazing, you know, like he is the 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 man of God that I needed in my life. Mm. That God said, you know what, I'm not sending just someone that's gonna tickle your ears. Yeah. He's gonna tell you straightforward, mm -hmm. you know, and, and he did, and and and, and pastor is like such an amazing man and and that really helped me out throughout my life you know and and he's been there for me and and so you know I just you know really want to give a shout out to him you know because he is such an amazing man and mm -hmm. and, and and I know like he led me to pastor you know um and and there was this one time where pastor was praying for me and and pastor he he looked at me and he would and um he could see like I think he could see the pain in my eyes and and everything what I was going through and I would always stand so tough and so strong like when he would pray for me you know mm -hmm. like oh no, I'm not going down or I'm not <laughs> letting go you know yeah, yeah and he told me he looked in my eyes and he said just let it go wow you know and and, and um when I looked into his eyes I knew that he was cared and I knew that like it was it was what's best for me, mm. and as I as he prayed for me, and he laid hand, he laid hands on me, and when he prayed for me, and I let go, and I fell back, I felt everything, of like the anger that I had, the 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 anxiety that I had, the frustrations that I had, mm. as I went down, that lifted off of me. Wow! Come on, come, come on. on! And that was the, that was that day. I'll always remember. You know, that's life changing right there. Very much. Yes, that's life changing and. His yes, was, and your yes, and the mm -hmm. Santiano family, their yeses was a yes to open up my heart to God. Wow. You know what, what I mean? And, it, and it's it's so amazing to to uh, I you know to um, to be a part of uh, of Harvest Time Church, and, and it's such a blessing. And um, going back to um, to uh, words like Sons of Courage and being able to 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 lead. 
is that I, I won't do it without God. Hmm. You know, like um, when he said, come on, Moses. And I was just like, OK, Lord, I'll, I'll, I'll leave it up to you. And and um, and so since then, like um, just pressing into God and just, you know, um, being a voice for him and 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 like because he speaks to me in visions hmm. and stuff and and so being that person um um it, it's amazing to see that in, in my trials and tribulations god's gonna touch people Amen. you know god's gonna help people and stuff like that and so um it's just it's just been an amazing journey with god and um you know to be a part of the sons of courage to be a part of uh, a movement uh, for the men and also for the church, uh, prayer for the prayer service. Like I would never have in the, in a million years would have thought of me doing that, you know, yeah. or, or being that person, you know. Mm -hmm. and, and but that's what God does. Amen. He changes you. He he lifts you up. He turns you around. He places your feet <laughs> on, on solid, solid ground. ground. Come, Come on. on. That's so good, Jerry. Yes. Come on. Well, you guys heard it right there. That's Jerry right there. Jerry, thank you so much for sharing, man. And and what Jerry didn't tell you guys, he's also a worship leader. <laughs> <laughs> yes. No, Jerry, you're like, man, when we do our worship nights and stuff, you know, we have crowd mics and everything. We could hear you like singing your heart out <laughs> and stuff. And man, it's just such a blessing. But Again, that, that, that's Jerry right there. I hope you guys were blessed by that. You know, Jerry has so much inside of him. And I'm so, again, just grateful for his life. And, uh, you know, if, if I could say this, if, if, if God did it for Jerry, he can do it for you. If God did Amen. it for me and everyone else that's in, in the church, everyone else that's been on these podcasts, if he could do it for us, he could do it for you guys. So share this video, amazing testimony of someone from the streets to the church, someone from that was down and out, depressed, now has joy. You heard it here, you know. Know what I mean? So it's so amazing. So Jerry, thanks again, man, for, for being here. Love you so much, man. You and your family. Make sure you guys comment uh, your favorite part down below. Make sure you guys like the video. Share it to somebody. Subscribe to this channel. Like I said, we have so much more content coming to you guys. Be blessed, and we'll see you guys on the next episode. Thanks again, Jerry.